All right. 13 years ago, every fiancé's worst nightmare came true for Susie Doran Preston. Her 23-year-old boyfriend and soldier, Siki Eyal, was killed while serving in the reserves in the West Bank. Susie is actually here in the studio with us today to tell us her story, and we're very honored. Thank you for joining us, Susie. Thanks for having me. So let's begin with, with just kind of, tell us a little bit about what happened to him. Um, it was in 2005 uh, during Khola Moed Pesach, and Siki was um, in Muluin service in, near Hebron. Um, and there was an emergency checkpoint and he was, um, they took their places and the taxi, a taxi stopped and backed up and there was an, um, he was hit by the taxi and then his unit opened fire where, uh, he was actually ultimately killed by friendly fire, um, by one of his comrades. And, and you weren't living in Israel at the time when this happened. You were actually abroad in Thailand, right? Um, Correct. Doing volunteer work or for the Peace Corps. Yes. Um, and so you hadn't actually immigrated, but you had been together for, at this point, a year or so. Can you tell Correct. us a little bit about how you met each other and kind of what your plans were in terms of coming back? Uh, well, I was in the Peace Corps in Thailand up north, and that's at that time is when I discovered Israelis. Um, I didn't understand at the time that it was the common route for post-military Israelis, but that's how we met um, one evening in Chiang Mai, and it was an instant connection. Um, and through Tiki, I came to know about Israel more than the Newsweek magazines that I read um, in my village every week. And eventually, I came to visit Israel and meet the family. Um, we became very serious. We had a very lively and fast-paced relationship, and we were very excited to make our plans together. With yeah, the and you were planning to convert to Judaism as well and move to Israel. And so you would think after going through such a tragic situation like this that you might take a step back and say, no way, I don't want anything to do with this country. But that's not what happened. Can you tell us a little bit more about you know how this changed your future? Um, when I arrived in Israel, I didn't know uh, any Jewish ritual with mourning or anything like that. So I actually came to Israel after Tziki died, which was a month after my father also died. Um, I came to Israel and I didn't get on a plane for many months. I just stayed with Tziki's family trying to recoup what I lost. It was a very dark and emotional time. And six months later, I kind of, I guess I came to the conclusion that uh, I would use Judaism to put my life back together. Um, and so I decided to convert and follow our plan together, which was for me to convert and then go to grad school and live in Israel ultimately. Which is, it's amazing that you were able to stay. I mean, how did being in Israel kind of impact the way that you dealt with this grief? Because obviously, you know, a day like Yom Azikaron, we see that there's so many people dealing with loss here. Was, did that have an impact on you in any way? Israel has an incredible way to hold anyone who's suffering and hold them up. Um, and I felt that Israel was the only place that I could go through my grief and also function as a normal person. Um, and so... It was very comfortable for me to stay. Um, I had a lot of support from the community, the Olim community, as well as Tziki's family. And, it and you're just also happened. part of a really interesting organization, right? Um, it's, it's called uh, Girlfriends of, of Fallen Soldiers. Correct. And tell us about what that's like. I know that you even recently met with, with young women who also kind of went through a similar experience, which must. I can't imagine how that feels for you 13 years after going through something like this. Uh, the Girlfriends of Fallen Soldiers is an incredible volunteer-only group of women um, who all of us have lost a soldier at some point in our lives. Um, and we serve to mentor other young women who have gone through the same loss. We provide group therapy. Um, we even have work in Knesset to try to get recognized. Um, with more bereavement rights and things like that. Um, it's so far, our organization is, supports over 400 women. Which um, is just crazy to think that this is, that, that that's the number, you know, that we're yes. even looking at because so many people are being affected by this. And, and you know, he 
was 23 years old. So you were just 24 when this happened. And this, this essentially changed the course of your life. Today, you are married, right? Correct. And you have children. Yes. How, how has it been to raise your children in this country, especially kind of knowing that history and what happened with Tsiki? And how have your kids kind of reacted to hearing this story? That's a very big question. Um, I think losing, becoming a mother and, and combining that with the loss of Tsiki um, is to understand that a mother's grief is the greatest grief I've, parent's grief is the greatest grief I've ever witnessed. Um, it's something that's on my mind a lot as I raise my children here. I'm extremely proud that they are Israeli. It's amazing to come 13 years later when, 13 years ago, I, my life was very dark and now it's very rich and my kids are very Israeli and, um, and their Hebrew is very good. But there is, is a reality that uh, we are not free from the conflict yet and right. we are all at risk for a uh, future heartbreak. But that's also something that, while you can pretend you can avoid it, you know, it's, it's very, it's, it's something that you, I don't think even when the time comes that you're ready to confront your children joining the army yeah. or participating well, in these things. Well, you told me this before we started the interview that um, your, your seven-year-old actually kind of came to terms with this experience that you had gone through because you're still in contact with Tsiki's family, right? Can you tell us? Yes. Um, Tsiki's family has, we've been very lucky that we've always had a very close relationship. Um, Tsiki's father walked me down the aisle when I got married and he served as a tzandak during my um, Brit Mila. Um, and my children call them Saba Moshe and Safta Tirza. And it's a, a very strong and powerful relationship. But I think there's also a reality, like my daughter asked me last year, why is it whenever I see Safta Tirza, we sit and cry together? So there's a very big reality of, you know, the pain of loss and how we decide to rebuild our lives. Um, but I'm always grateful that they're an active part in our life and yeah. makes the shock of our history together a little bit less painful, I think. All right. Well, Susie, you're incredibly strong. And, you know, I read a lot of your writing online as well, which is incredibly powerful. So you guys should check out some of her, her work. Susie, Thanks. thank you for joining us and telling us the story. Thank you so much.